So, the Lang DDC. This one happens to be a Swiftec branded DDC. Uh, nonetheless, some people love these pumps, some people absolutely hate them. I personally like them, but I will say they do tend to break down and have more problems than your standard D5. One common problem, which if you know how to solder is very easy to fix, is going to be the wires getting crunched. And actually that's already starting to happen here. Especially when you put a pump top on, it presses down on those wires. And when you have like a four pin, you can end up with an issue there over time. Um, let's see if this one will split apart. Started coming. Ooh. All right. So yeah, that's a real common DDC issue. It's sort of just a design flaw, I guess. Those wires have to make a pretty sharp bend and press up against that guy there, but it's very easy to clean those pads up and solder new wires on. But that's not what we're here to talk about today. Today we're going to talk about heat sinks and DDCs. Do you need a DDC heat sink? Um, probably. It all depends. Do you want your DDC to last a really long time? Um, is it a small confined space it's going into? Uh, generally, the more powerful DDCs do benefit from a heat sink. All right. So, got a couple heat sinks to try here. Got the all famous Bits Power and uh, the old school EK heat sink. Uh, we're going to install both of them. Let's get into it. All right. So, the Bits Power of all the uh, standard DDC heat sinks I've seen is by far one of the more involved. Uh, to install. Installing the EK heatsink is very similar to that of the Alpha Cool and I think a couple other heatsinks on the market. One question I do hear a lot and wondered myself at a time is um, will all heatsinks line up with all pump tops? And the answer is yes because the hole spacing is standard through all DDC pumps. Um, the only problems you might encounter are how long your screws are for that given heatsink. Because, for example, the Bits Power, this is absolutely meant to be used with a Bits Power pump top. So those screws might be a little too long or not long enough. Um, stuff like the EK is a little more universal. I've never had a problem with an EK heatsink fitting. All right, let's start with the uh, well. Let's start with the good old EK, the simple one here. As you'll see. Heat sinks always come with thermal pads in the box, and uh, these are something you can buy separately too. These are anti-vibration mounts. All right, there's our actual heat sink there. Nice big piece of aluminum. All right, and we got our screws. It does have some EK does have some very clear directions, as with all of their products. Uh, you can't deny the quality and design of EK products. It's just sometimes they're a little expensive for what you're getting. These aren't too bad though. You can see that piece of tape in there. That is intentional and what that is is insulation so that uh, when your board is in here you won't have any kind of shorting in the heat sink. Let's take a look at that now. Okay, so there's your board, and when this is in here, obviously that board is going to sit right in there, and those wires are potentially, not necessarily, going to come in contact with that area. So that's what that's for. Uh, I noticed some of these heat sinks don't include that. Nice EK did that for you. Right, so. With any DDC heatsink, you're going to need this guy right here, some thermal pads. Uh, these ones are some that we cut here at Frozen CPU many years ago, and they're meant to pretty much perfectly cover the surface of the heatsink. Looks like the one from EK has the same design. Sometimes, sometimes they'll just cover that whole area. It really doesn't matter, as long as you're getting some good contact down here. First thing to do, always, 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 because then you're just going to circumvent the whole heatsink, is you need to peel this plastic off. Okay, if you don't peel this plastic off, 
like, like I said, you are essentially making this a thermal insulator rather than a thermal conductor. Usually this is not so difficult. Uh, this pad is a little stickier than normal. Anyway, so there you go. Got your pad all the way around. It's not on top of this. And now that's going to sit nicely against your heat sink. Alright, some people are just uncomfortable playing around with the insides of electronics. Um, I find it fun. So that's going to fit right down in there go ahead and squeeze that together and as you see we're squeezing on these wires try to keep the wires right next to each other and EK has done a good job of opening up that gap so that the wires aren't getting crushed too bad all right so that's it you now have a heat sink installed on your DDC um, again you have a couple different types of screws here This is pretty standard for all ADC heat sinks. You have your main screw here, which is going to go in and screw into your pump top. And then just below that, you have what's called your anti-vibration mount. That's going to screw into there if you want to stand your DDC up. And then when this sits down on the bottom of your case or what have you, it's going to prevent that horrible vibration noise by giving you some insulation. And then you can take it a step further and actually screw that down to your case with one of those right there. All right, let's, so pretty nice heat sink. I'm a big fan of these EK ones. We have them in silver and black here at Frozen CPU. Let's take a look at the bits power. As you can see, uh, the heat sink is now in two pieces. You got the bottom section, which is the actual fins and then the top section, which is what connects to your pump top. Uh, Bits power nicely, always comes with the included wrench. Okay, we have our thermal pad, which is a pretty thick thermal pad coming from Bits power. For this video, and the sake of it, I'm just going to use the same thermal pad again, which is too thin for this application, but it's just a show and tell, so who cares? Remember how we talked about that piece of insulation tape on the last one? Bits power goes ahead and gives you a long piece to cut for yourself. I've never had a DDC heat sink short out um, from metal to metal contact, but it can happen. In case you were wondering, all these little spots here, that way what those spots are for is an area to put that thermally insulative tape. Now in this case, the thermal pad seems to be blocking it, but that is potentially a shorting place. The other potential shorting place is going to be uh, kind of right in there, you know, when this goes in. Those exposed wires could short against this powder coating. It's been a while since I've done one of these. Alright, so again, normally we'd put some insulative tape down, but we're not going to do that just because this is an example. Thermal tape is going to cover that box. Sorry, the camera's backwards on me. And going to cover this portion right here so that there's no contact of the wires from there to there. See what I'm saying? I'm going to go ahead and pop this right in here. Now, unlike EK, its power does not open this section up quite as much. I've actually in the past taken a Dremel tool and ground out that area just to give the wire some more clearance. But So we got this piece, all right. Now you're going to have your bottom come on and it's going to start just by kind of sticking. All right. That is your completed heat sink right there. The tricky part about this one is in order for it to fully stay together, you have to connect it to a pump top. Let me go get a pump top. The Bits Power heatsink, or vice versa with the EK or the Alpha Cool. I'm going to take this old Acetol XSPC DDC pump top and use this. Now here's where the discrepancy comes in. The screws included 
with the heat sink probably won't be the same thread as the pump top so you're going to want to use these stock screws that came with the top or if you're lucky enough and they are the right thread. Uh, let's give that a shot. Alright, and there you have it. It's a very pretty looking uh, heatsink for a DDC. Nice thing about the Bits Power one also is these different hole mounting options they give you. They do sell a bracket that will allow you to hook this DDC pump right up to a fan, or hook it up to a fan that way. I mean, you can mount these in so many different ways as compared to the Alpha Cool or EK style heatsink. But along with that, you know, it is a little more problematic. Um, in terms of efficiency between the Bits Power and the, uh, the other brands, I don't think there's too much of a difference. Um, but if you are going to run a DDC, especially in a small form factor build, which generally speaking, small form factor is what DDC is for, I highly recommend running a heatsink if you can. It's just worth it. Um, you will feel these get hot. DDCs tend to send their heat out into the air. Uh, D5s tend to put their heat into the water, but this is going to cool much better than this will, especially if this is flat against your computer case. There's no cooling there at all. Alright. So there you have it. Bits Power DDC heatsink. Come get them right here at Frozen CPU. We also got the EK, we got the Alpha Cool. If you have any questions or comments, concerns, please leave them down below. Shoot me an email, max at frozencpu.com, and have a great day. Thank <laughs> you.